So down here, um, we're going to do a similar thing. I don't want to draw my NPCs at the same time as I'm drawing my tiles because then they're going to be overwritten as it's cycling through here uh, and their uh, movement routines are going to look choppy. We want them to draw on top of the tile layer. Uh, so it looks like they're on the land but they're actually sort of existing in another layer altogether. Um, still the, the, the draw sub is going to be almost identical to this layer up here. Draw NPCs. So um, because of that, I should be able to just copy most of this. I'm just going to do that so I don't have to retype out all those goodies. Um, paste it down there. I don't want them, you know, to draw if they wander outside of the map bounds for some reason. Hopefully your map bounds have been, you know, blocked with some sort of block tiles, but um, that's no longer relevant. And I really don't need to see coordinates on the tile. Okay, so the only thing we really need to adjust here is what is drawing and how it's drawing, or where it's drawing, I guess. Uh, we're not going to be referencing the world texture, our tile set for the world. Instead, we're going to uh, want to cycle through our NPCs again. So I'm going to have to come up above here. Uh, to reference our NPCs, we're going to have to say for each entity as NPC um, in map dot NPCs For each entity as NPC in map.npcs, I want to say if entity.x, that's the entity's x coordinate, equals our map's x coordinate, and entity.y equals our map's y coordinate, then go ahead and draw it. And I'm going to drop down here, do an NDF. Okay. So we, we only want entities that exist uh, at, a, at the specified location. Uh, according to their uh, map coordinates. All right, so the texture that we want to draw is going to be the texture that we passed from our entity. Okay, in this case, uh, whether it's the merchant texture, so this should be sort of, uh, you know, it should come and dynamically grab the right texture since we're using multiple images um, for our NPCs. So we want it to grab the right picture I'm going to say entity dot, and we're going to use the get NPC texture function to return the right one based upon its, uh, in, its NPC model. Um, for the drawing rectangle, we're going to draw x times the tile size times, now this is important here. Um, 
we could if if we were standing still we wouldn't need this but you got to remember that these little guys have to be moving around uh, at the same time as your character is moving around on the screen so we have to take into account your characters offset uh, when drawing the entities um, otherwise uh, when you move your character you know that if you're standing still the entities will be drawing fine they'll be moving along but uh, they'll their offsets will be really weird on the map if uh, we move our character during their walk cycles so we need to factor in our characters offset as well as the entities offset so we're gonna say plus entity dot offset x okay once we factor that in our entities should move uh, continue moving properly on the screen according to their path so we need to do the same thing for the offset y say plus entity dot offset y and that should produce a smooth scrolling effect when I walk okay let me see is there anything else I need here probably let's see we're not drawing okay we're going to use um, the get NPC source for the source rectangle since we're not drawing map tile here we're drawing an entity we're going to say entity dot get NPC source oh man did I actually forget to specify the NPC source <laughs> I may have <laughs> somehow I, ma I managed to uh, forget a very important sub in our NPC class my apologies for that um, not only do we need to get the proper texture but we need to get the proper source rectangle as well so we need another public function here I don't know how I overlooked that get NPC source you have to specify the source rectangle on the NPC uh, sprite sheets so we're gonna return the value of a rectangle for this and this just plays into the animation cycle and whatnot and goes and grabs the proper uh, part of their walk cycle from that uh, sprite or from the um, NPC set so um, what we need to do is grab our move directions here so we're gonna say select these are where I always uh, end up you know I end up mixing these up and it's a select case last direction and I'm gonna say case one case two case three case four so we need to produce a source rectangle let's say rect see I told you it was important earlier and then I went and forgot it How about that <laughs> rectangle so I'm gonna use you know because my all of my character uh, sheets here are 32 by 32 I am hard coding this uh, if you're using other other sizes for your um, for your uh, character sources then you're gonna want to probably throw in a variable or something um, you know make it a little more dynamic 
I'm just going to leave these as is for now. Um, so we want to multiply that size times the animation frame for the x value. And uh, for the y value, I'm just going to start on 0 and increment. Uh, let's see here. 32 by 32 pixels. So looking at our um, image here, where'd she go? That was weird. Okay. I must have clicked it off or something. Um, looking at the picture here, our animation frame increments. Uh, by 32 pixels, it multiplies it out. Uh, the the anti frame goes from zero to one to two, so it starts on zero, uh, zero zero, works its way down by 32 pixels, the height and width, um, as you saw there. So, 32 times any frame. If any frame is zero, it's uh, zero, zero. It starts in the upper left-hand corner and uh, moves out 32 by 32 pixels. Um, if we're moving in the y direction, oh man, why does that keep doing that? It's irritating. Um, you know, we have to grab the right ones here, of course. So if they're moving down, we want it to grab this sprite or this um, this row and each row you know we advance each row on the Y so we don't uh, need to to uh, increment the the Y axis only the X axis because we go you know 0 32 64 or 96 sorry going across on the x-axis. Okay, so what we do know is that that first frame, oh, that's going to drive me crazy. The first frame is the downward. The second frame is left. Third frame is right. Fourth frame is up. So we have down, left, right, up. down, left, right, up. And I don't think the, the numbers matter so much as, uh, you know, making it grab the right section here. So we know that uh, zero on our y-axis was the first row. Left is um, going to be our second row, so that's going to be 32. Right should be our third row, should be um, 64. And then the, uh, the final row, 96, should be upward. So this dynamically grabs the frames going from left to right, and this just increments uh, by 32 pixels the source row. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, and we want to return our srect that we just set. So. We should be able to go back to our world screen and now reference the sub that we were missing here. Get NPC source. And hopefully I haven't mixed these all up and, you know, along with our move directions and got everything all weird. If our entities, if our NPCs are walking sideways or backwards, we'll know. Um, Let's see, what else do I need to do? So we have done pretty much everything 
uh, if there are entities in the list, they should draw. What we don't have is any enti entities in the list. So we'll have to go to our map base and actually add some. Let's see what happens when we run this, just for fun. Well, it didn't crash. That's good. Um, we don't have any entities because we haven't added any. So let's see what happens when we add an entity to our map. This is where I start getting a little nervous. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna come down here, add a sample NPC under here. I'm just going to make a remark here since this is not a permanent fixture. Uh, this will add, because we're adding this to the map base, instead of uh, bringing it through a map load or something. Um, that means it's going to add it to every single map that uses the map base, which is every single map. So uh, you're not going to want the same in, uh, NPCs walking around on every map in the exact same locations. Um, add sample NPCs. So we'll create a new NPC. I'm just going to call him new NPC as a new NPC. And I'm going to say with, whoops, with new NPC. And we'll give it some properties. Um, I'm going to start with an entity model of, um, how about the princess? And um, we can give it a dialogue. We won't be able to invoke that dialogue until we add some, uh, you know, a routine for that. But I'm going to say, take me on an adventure, Red Marvin. And that will come into play later. And we're going to set her a starting coordinate on the map. Now, that's not a very big map, so uh, we'll see where x4 um, y let's see 9 puts her. Should be intriguing. And we can say uh, we need to add her to the list now that we've created her. So I'm going to say npcs dot add, and she should be ready to add to the list as new npc. Now let's see if it crashes. What if we get lucky and there's a princess on there not walking backwards? Yay, there she is. Oh, and she's walking properly. How about that? That's fantastic. Now, what you'll notice is that she is walking. Um, she's invoking her behavior cycle every time she stops because we haven't randomized it at all. Um, we randomized her movement direction, which is good. It seems to be working well. Uh, she hit the mountains and she stopped. So, sweet. Um, everything seems to be working beautifully here. So let's go ahead and randomize this just a little bit more. 